All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker up on TSN. Brian Azio, Doug Jeff O'Neill. Jamie Noodles McLennan. How we feeling? Beautiful Monday <laughs> yeah, here in Toronto. Yes. I gotta, we have to have small chat before we start the show. Yeah. You have to call off your goons because... You're feeding them ammo with your retweets <laughs> of the Lions pick because mm-hmm. a guy just t- – and I'm going to feel like Ross Atkins here with the explanation of this, and I honestly don't care if you believe me or not, but tell your people to stop bothering me because you're going into some Italian movie. Fredo. And some Fredo. Fredo. <laughs> Prado. I'm, like, I'm smart yeah. and I want respect. Yeah. There it now is. the worst You're part Fredo. was like just an early morning coffee, and then you tweeted out the stupid gif of Fredo dog, <laughs> and some guy underneath it writes Frodo dog, and it's liked by one guy, Brian Hayes. That's right. That's right. Because you know so, what? You are. Here we go. I feel like Ross Atkins. That was a team decision. To pick the Lions. Oh, really? That's not how I recall it going down, I, Noodles. You, look, didn't we you track were a witness. <laughs> didn't we actually say this could be the TSN turning point? This could be the beginning of the fracture because you interrupted Luke. Guys, you actually interrupted him right. and said, Guys, I'm going to stop you right that's there. That's right. He went over the top look, like Ross Atkins look, with John Schneider. I, no, I hate, <laughs> I hate having to do this, but... I was feeling a little, I feel embarrassed explaining this. I was feeling a little bit guilty because I wasn't, con- look at this garbage. <laughs> you're Fredo. You yeah. got over, you got passed over by your younger brother and you're not Listen dumb, you're to smart me. and you it deserve was, respect. It was, dumb, uh, I'm smart and I want respect. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, continue. Fredo. I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed because I wasn't contributing. So I said, look, here's what we got to do. <laughs> To start the Ravens Lions pick, you be like, and you can play it back and listen if you want to. Oh, we have. Oh, we it. have. We will I want to play it. No, no. I so do listen, it explain it. I'll, explain it, then we'll play it, Fred. I'll explain it, and you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna hear it play out back on Friday. So I said, Partsy, you go on and start by saying, "Well, I'm not sure about this one, but I think it's the Ravens." And then I said, "Once you say that." I'm gonna jump in and say, no, no, not this time. It's I gotta, I gotta overrule you. Blah blah blah. And the pick is the Lions. That was our team pick the whole time. Of course I it was. I disagree. Of course it was. Yeah, of yeah. course it was. You, you and Johnny Ola down in uh, Havana, you cooked <laughs> up a big plan, right? Uh, yeah. Old man Hyman Roth, like all you guys, you know, back in the day working together to make sure that everything's moving in your direction. But this is the problem with us doing a live show that happens to be recorded. We actually have the tape. So, JP, yeah. why don't we play this? This was from Friday when the O Dog, a.k.a. Fredo Corleone, went over the top <laughs> on, his ba- on his little brother, Michael Corleone, who wanted to take the Ravens. This is what happened on Friday. I bounced back and forth, but I think at the end of the day, you know, I think I'm going to go with the Ravens. No, you're um, not, Partsy. I'm sorry. I'm going to step in here. Oh, I get it. You're the NFL guy. I got to make a stand. Separator. I don't ever. S- hey, it is a separator. <laughs> Separating weekend. <and laughs> you got to give this one with. to me. I'm sorry. I got to take right. control. I have sat in the sidelines too long. <laughs> I want the Lions here. And you got to be with me on this pick. Wow. And then I actually had something to say about that pick because I called this. I knew it was coming. It's actually better than I ever thought it would be, Noodles, because he's throwing his guy into the bus an hour before he even comes into the studio. JP, play what I said was going to happen. I just want JP to, like, pull some of the, the, you know, the sound here yep. of, O oh, disagreeing, and then having to talk him into it. Because if it goes south, that could fracture the relationship. Big time. Right Ravens 38-7. <laughs> on, it'll be a blowout. And this guy wow. will be AWOL. <laughs> 38-6. I was I'm incorrect with you, my prediction. I, I'm telling you, I was not responsible for the Lions okay. pick. My right, partsy, like... It's one of the worst picks of so, all time. 
One of the Dude, worst picks of I all time. I get it. And in one of our text <laughs> chains, you said, I don't care what happens the rest of the year. Because the Lions pick, it was so gorgeous and so garbage <laughs> and so wrong yeah. that I'm happy with anything else that happens the rest of the year. That's right. I can sleep easy at night knowing I didn't pick the Lions to cover against the Ravens, and they lost 38-6. to In fact, I'm in such a good mood today. I brought in the Team Owen Wilson hats. Oh. I've, I've had these in my possession for weeks. They're in here. Luke's going to get his. Oh, yours is waiting for you in your I'll locker room. I'll be in tomorrow. You could put one it's in. It's in there. It's in your dressing room. I signed it, and I, I, I crossed out win and put Fredo in there. <laughs> so Dude, if you good. did that, I'll light that thing on fire right <laughs> in front of your house. Yours is waiting for you. And, like, uh, dumb, I'm smart, <laughs> and I want the <laughs> I love that you came over the top, and, and it had to play out that way. 28 yeah. nothing at the half, 38 to 6. Um, anyway, Luke will be in here in about an hour. Now he needs to explain his role in all this because I'm noticing that things are really starting to go south. And listen, I didn't have the best weekend either, admittedly. Dude, that's why you're I such didn't a have liar. The best weekend. Nothing's going south. Nobody won a game yesterday that's right. until us last night. Which is pathetic. And you guys did get the Eagles last night. That's okay. a big win. So right. that's just a big in win. summary, just in summary, mm -hmm. last night cancels out Detroit. So forget about it and stop making a big deal. It was stupid. It did look stupid. <laughs> I feel like Ross Atkins. Man. You are Ross Atkins. I know. You are Ross Atkins. It, it looked stupid. It was stupid. But last night made up no. for it, and it was a team yeah, yeah. decision. <laughs> it was a team to decision. <laughs> Gary Goff is is yeah. you say Kikuchi. Who's the guy from Seattle? Who's the manager from Seattle where you're just like, this was good. This was planned all along. Jerry you DePinto. Knew gonna... Jerry there it DePinto. is. Yeah, you're Gary DePinto. That's yeah, right. That's what you need to do is literally say this was what was planned all we along. Were looking that's how you started the show. Exactly you're like, yeah, we right. planned this we all along. We were looking for 50%. Yeah, it's all good, yeah. Noodles. He is he is Gary DePinto <laughs> uh, slash Ross Atkins, and he's throwing everyone under the bus, and this is how relationships slowly start to yeah, deteriorate. They splinter, splinter they just splinter. a little chip. They yep, splinter, and it's all good. And I'm I'm on the clock for the game tonight. We got a big Monday nighter. We got two ball games tonight. Max Scherzer on the mound for Texas in a game seven down in Houston, where the road Ooh. team is undefeated. It's kind of a wild ALCS. It is. And my Diamondbacks. Six or more. All you got to do is lose in six or more. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. I think they're going down for the count. Bryce Harper steals home, hits a bomb the other night. And the Phillies are certainly in the driver's seat in the NLCS. That game getting started in about an hour. So we got two balls tonight. I, I had no intentions of that even going back to Philly. Like, I thought that was just going to be. I'll give the, I'll give the Diamondbacks Yeah, they credit. battled. Yeah, they, they battled. battled. They're going to yep. get crushed tomorrow night or, or tonight. tonight. They start first pitches in an hour. Yeah. I so agree with you. They're, I think they're they done smoked. in an hour, but they fought at least. Yeah, I saw a video of like a, a city worker down in Philly preparing like for the the insanity that's going to happen. Are if they the greasing the poles again? That, that's exactly the what they're doing. They're greasing <laughs> the poles so guys can't climb up them. Some guy is out there. That is his job. <laughs> You have a job. City <laughs> Hall has called ball. you. You got to go out there and make sure that no lunatic can climb up, you know, a street light. And there are people scattered throughout downtown Philadelphia doing that right now. Um, so two ball games tonight. We got an NFL game tonight. Niners, Vikings, only one game in the NHL. And then 16 games tomorrow. All 32 teams are playing and they're doing the staggered start tomorrow, including the Leafs, Washington at 6 p.m. Six o'clock start. What a Tomorrow weird for the time. Leaf game. I know. I know. Very what are strange. They doing? Like, I can, very like strange. usually it's like, okay, it's not seven, it's eight, but it's never like six. Yeah, it's for the purpose of American TV, clearly, but you would think Austin Matthews, the Leafs are a big brand, Alex Ovechkin. Maybe that's why they're going first, is so that they can lead into that game. But literally 16 games are being played, and it's like six o'clock, six fifteen, six thirty, six forty five, seven. Like it staggers all the way to eleven o'clock. I don't understand right. why they shy away from Friday nights. It's like, what is on Fridays that you're like, there's two games on Friday nights. I don't get that. Well, I can tell you why they run from Sunday and run from Monday, and they should, right? right. Especially Football. in this. Exactly. And I understand that a lot of teams play Saturday night, which is hockey night. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to play Friday, and that's the reason. But it's like, can't you just fire on some games that teams aren't playing Saturday, fire them up on Friday? I know.
It's, it's weird. It is. It's it, early in the year. You see this type of scheduling all the time. And I, I like the idea of them, you know, staggering games, trying something different. I hope they pick it up when the NFL season comes to an end. Try it on a weekend. You know, try it on a right. Saturday or a Sunday. Um, but as a result, the Leafs are up first. They, they start at 6 o'clock tomorrow. And uh, Gary Price is playing for the Leafs tomorrow. Oh, my God. Joseph Wall I, I, in net for the Leafs tomorrow, a.k.a. Gary Price. My head almost blew off my body because I've had to talk about this ad nauseum <laughs> today. Like, I, I, I somebody – I'm not going to point names out, but one guy's like, yeah, well, it's clearly Joseph Wall has been, you know, just a great goaltender. I'm like, what? Did I miss a bunch of games that he's played? <laughs> Like he's played one and a half games. Yeah, it's this very, season. very early. Like, very and, early. And Max Why Domi just, just couldn't wait a... to get in front of the camera to say that he's I been know. quiet for two weeks, and then all of a sudden gets a couple nice assists, and then just got to come out with the the shooting from the hip. I was I'm surprised. Like, I was surprised because he knows the mark. Why don't we play it? This was Max, and Domi was was feeling it Saturday as of he course. should. Right, yes. he finally came alive. He made two great plays. Matthew and I scored on both of them. Long overdue, albeit only, you know, what, the, the fifth game of the season. But they needed depth scoring. They needed Domi to snap out of it. Made yeah. really nice plays. He was happy. The team was happy. They deserved to be. Um, but this is what Domi said after the game when he was asked about a guy he probably barely knows, right? He just got yeah. here. He wasn't with the team a year ago. This is what um, Max Domi had to say about Joseph Wall. He's great, man. I he uh, he really kind of reminds me of, of of Carey Price's demeanor. He's very calm and relaxed, and both on and off the ice, and big body moves really technically sound. I mean, I'm not a goalie coach by any means, but he's he's outstanding. Yeah, I don't understand. No. He didn't say this guy's the next Carey Price. No, he it, said it, he's calm and he's got slow body movements and he's calm. He didn't say he's the next Carey Price. Right. So instead of we talk about fans freaking out. Let's not turn in that comment into he's the next Carey Price. But but you're right. Normal people would listen to that and say, you're right. He's got a demeanor like Carey. Not normal people on, you know how we, in this market, it's not. It's fandom. It's like, he's the next Carey. They're not listening. They're not listening to what he just said. Yes, they ha he has demeanor. He's a big guy. Carries himself like Carey Price. But again, it's, yeah, he's the next Carey Price. He's this. Listen, he seems like he's going to be a good goaltender. I've watched him for 11 games or how much he's ever played. I played, watched him in the AHL All Star game last year. He is their goaltender of the future. And he's their goaltender of the now, uh, battling for the net with Samsonov. But, like, let's pump the brakes one and a half games in. Yeah, let's, this just, season. let's yeah. just sum it up like this. Samsonov was out to lunch on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or well, Saturday night yeah. or Sunday? Saturday, Saturday night. I, I didn't. Yeah. I, which goals did you think were bad? The one I just thought it was Kucherov he looked, he looked like he was out to lunch. I know it was some power plays. There was some Kucherov magic. He hasn't been good all year. Let's also no, that's, clarify that's fair that. So that's let's fair just keep say. it like this and button it up. Wall deserves the next start, and maybe he yes. can get some runway if he plays well in Washington. And leave it at that. Maybe Samsonov and Noodles, you've talked about it at nauseum over the last five years. Sometimes a guy needs to take a little two-week break, and I have no idea what the hell they do. They might tie themselves to a goalie net and work on different things. I don't know. But maybe he needs to take two weeks and figure his game out. And we'll leave it at that. Joseph Wall deserves the next start, and maybe he gets a little bit of runway. Okay, yeah, that well, was your Ross Atkins answer. And, and, and the team, the team could actually play a little better in front of him defensively. In whoever's in net, mm -hmm. they gave up twenty-one high-quality chances the other night. Like that's that's garbage defense, and they have been defensively garbage all year. They've just outscored their issues. So you can easily lay it at the goaltender's feet. Play a little better systematically, and that just that doesn't just go for the Maple Leafs. It's loose early on. We know how systems takes a little bit, but this team is not buttoned up. Like it's not like they're you know they're this, this Samsonov's allowing like bad goal after bad goal. Like these are these are preventable plays in front of the in front of the goaltender too. Yeah, uh, I think that's that's definitely reasonable. I, I think sometimes it's just a matter of fact, as Keith said after the game, you can't give up three goals on four shots in a big yeah. game to start. It doesn't even matter the context of how it went in. It's right. the coach is going to look up and say, not your night, out, we need a change. And I think Same that's what happened. Same as the tip-in goals in Edmonton at the, at the second night of the season. 
It was Vancouver. Right. It wasn't Campbell. Evan- yeah. You're right. It, it wasn't it like was you It was the can fact that them, there was but... two tip ins and it, they just can't go in. And that's right. just the end you of just the story. You need a save. You're right. At, at some point, you need a save. I'm not sitting here defending the goalie. What I'm saying is that they're, they're just, it, it, it's. It's all all of a sudden. It's just it's lazy narrative to just go. That's the goalie, and that's it. When you actually have to look at everything in front, plus the goaltender, you need the big save at the right time. Samsonov didn't prove that the other night. Three goals out of four go in. You change the goaltender. You change the momentum. They come back and win. So it was the right move to pull him the other night. It right. Was the and, right and move. Keith said after the game that that Wall was starting tomorrow anyway. So right. it it doesn't really. It doesn't matter, but the door is open just based on on the context of Samsonov and, you know, how they even approached his contract in the offseason. Like, they took him to arbitration. They did not sign. They could have signed him to a three-year deal, five-year deal, seven-year deal, eight-year deal. They chose not to. Um, He had a good year last year, specifically at home. His stats were absolutely outstanding. But he has been a hot and cold goalie throughout his career. He's a young guy. He's still proving himself. In the playoffs, his stats were bloated. He made more stops than the other guy, though, right? He is the goalie on record when they finally won a playoff series. He played better than Vasilevsky, but his numbers were not outrageously good. And then when he got to Florida, he got injured, and Joseph Wall stepped in and played really well. I still think it's likely Samsonov is 1A, Wall is 1B, but the door was always going to crack open at some point. I think what might be a bit surprising is that it's open this early in the season. And Wall deserves his flowers. Like, he played really well the other night. Those stops he made on Kucherov to end the third period were unbelievable stops. In close to keep it a tie game, allow them to get to overtime. Got them two points. Got them two points. And hey, let's not act like in this market, if you're a fan of the Toronto Maple Leafs, that this is some luxury that's happening again. A drafted goalie that somehow turns out and is young and really good. This hasn't happened in 50 years. 30 years since Potvin. Like you, Potvin. Yeah. you could argue Josh Reimer, but Reimer came up when they were terrible. James. James. And, and Reimer, what did I say? Josh. Oh, jo- yeah, James Reimer. <laughs> James Reimer. Was did, the I guy. <laughs> did I say we're false? Did I say James? He came up. They weren't very good. He yeah. went on to have a great, a very good career, right? A really good, long, prolonged career. One last night. Yes, exactly. Still kicking around the league. I mean, that's a yeah. testament to him, and he's been in the league for quite some time. Yeah. But it's, so it's a nice You're thing. You're talking Felix Potvin. Yeah, so it's a nice thing. It's a great story. That a goalie was drafted. He got drafted in, the, I believe, the same draft as Matthews in Buffalo with our buddy with the mustache on the floor that's wheeling right. him around up to the yeah. overdrive booth. Yep. So it's nice that they drafted a guy, and maybe he's actually good. Maybe he turns out to be a good goalie. Why it hasn't happened, I have no idea. I have no idea why they it's haven't drafted goals. It's almost shocking that it's been that long where they continued to miss. And listen, they did draft a guy that turned out to be great, but they traded him. And we know, you know the story You know what? They of drafted that. another kid from out west that he, he just Ian retired. Scott. He had, he Ian re- Scott, because he had knee problems and hip problems. He couldn't even move. But he didn't the make thing it. Is, is, the thing is, is he had knee, knee problems at 14 years old when he was working at hockey schools in Calgary. And, and then he goes at PA at Prince Albert, was outstanding there, and, and they draft him high. He, he, his projection was very high, but his body didn't hold up. It's unfortunate because the kid was forced to retire at 22, 23. But ultimately, like... They got to research that to make sure his body was fine, but it wasn't. Un- unfortunately, they they lost out on that one. But the kid projected to be really good. But you're right. Here's a good story, and and it's an opportunity. And let's let's breathe on this other, including myself. Let's breathe on it here too. At the starting of the year, it wasn't like Sam- Samsonov is not one of the eight. No, he's, he's not. not. He's one not of guaranteed 60, anything. He's not a 65-game starter. At most, he's a 50 to 55 game. He's a tandem goaltender. Guess what? He's in a tandem, and now he's going to fight for the net, which he should have been from day one because the net is wide open. Joseph Wall, it's your turn up. Go ahead yeah. and see what you can do with it. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a big opportunity for him. I think if he wins tomorrow, you just keep rolling it over. And I think it might be the best thing for Ilya Samsonov as well to poke at him a little bit. Last year, he came in hungry. It was a one-year deal on the cheap. Competition. Yeah. Murray was the man. Murray started opening night. The expectation was, there's Murray. He's a veteran. He's got two cups. you got to go chase it. Now the roles are reversed. Not everyone's comfortable in that position. And so I, I do think you're going to see some tough love here from Sheldon Keefe that you don't generally see 
coaches necessarily say or do when it comes to a number one well, goaltender. Dude, They're usually very, very it, delicate with that. It, it's yeah. a non-negotiable thing, though. Like, you, no matter how talented these guys are, if it's three shots on four or whatever it is, you're out. Like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're not out. playing. You of have course. no chance of winning. No, man. you're coming out. Regardless of right. what, what the context of how it went in, you're coming out. It was a big game, and Wall went in. He played really well, and they got what they needed. They needed depth scoring to finally arrive. You know, and Matthew Nyes supplied it the other night. Like, that's that's a big, big production from a guy that they're counting on, even though he's still really young. Like, he is still, he's a rookie. You know, he came up at the last three games of the season last year, played in the playoffs, got hurt, didn't even yeah. play every game. Like, yeah, oh. they're relying on him. They're relying on Max Domi to make plays like he did at the end of the game the other night. Those were really nice plays. And those guys have been quiet the first Very four games. quiet. So you need that. You need production when it's not going in for the other guys. And they got it. And that's, you know, that's good on them because maybe that gives them the confidence to, to grow and start to build off of that. And also maybe it gives the coach confidence going, I don't have to run Matthews at 26 minutes a night to, to see if we can get any production out of anybody because we might have other guys who can do it. Mm -hmm. you know, I, and I, there's still more to give there. Young Croak has more to give. Like there's guys on that roster – you know, I don't know where Minton's at. I think, you know, I think it's probably he's he's, he's out of the lineup. Yeah, I, he'll know, stick like, around probably for the road trip, right? Which is probably the right, right move. Sure. Let him finish on the road, and then eventually they'll send him back. And you know, they're yeah, they're gonna have to. It's a good story. It's a good story. It was a good camp. He started with the team. It's unlikely he gets back in the lineup. He might. If he does, maybe he surprises people. You know, if they give him another opportunity, anything is possible. But he's 19, and if he goes back, he's a he's a piece of a future yeah. puzzle, right? He's a guy within their system that clearly they're high on and they should be. But, um, yeah, it was it was a comeback win that they I, I think they needed considering, you know, early in the season you lose three games in a row in regulation. That stings. Like, good teams aren't doing that. Boston won again. You know, Boston's yeah. undefeated. Vegas undefeated. Uh, Colorado undefeated. So, yeah. you know, you, you got a situation here where the Atlantic Division is doing what we thought it would. Detroit can't lose. Right five now. in a row. Detroit can't lose. Alex DeBrinkett's got eight goals. Justin Hall's the new Larry Murphy. Larry <laughs> Murphy goes to Detroit. The guy's a stud. <laughs> Dude, uh, Justin Hall. Not, Justin I, Murphy. I'm not going to uh, call him Larry Murphy because we all know he's not that. But maybe, just maybe as a fan base, we just got to leave people alone a little bit. Because I watched him playing against Calgary the other day. Was it yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, you know what? Third pairing gets it in, gets it out. And he's just big, and he's got a big, like, he's got length, and he's intercepting pucks, and it's like, no, he's not bothering anyone. But on the other side of it, it's like, he didn't do that here. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, he was seemed to be... He struggled, like, and they asked too much of him. That was another part of it. Wow. In, in yeah. Detroit, you know, he'll... He will show his true colors. He's a he's an NHL defenseman. Dude, he's That's a third, what he is. Yes, he's a third pairing guy that right. just keep things quiet, use it on the penalty kill. But I think what happened here is he had one game where he shut down Connor McDavid, and everybody thought that this guy was some kind of defensive specialist, and it was too much for him. Well, you know where he benefited was the the hatred towards Babcock. Remember, he was the first guy that Keith inserted right into the lineup when Babcock left, and he found a role. And then it was like, right. well, Babs is the boogeyman, and he didn't play him, so you know how good could he have been? And he was in the minors, and it was a cool story. And he goes to Detroit. He's a Midwestern guy. He got a three-year deal, I think, at pretty good money. And he's he's it'll be quiet there for him. He'll just plug along and do what he always does. Dude, he's loving life. Yes, well, as and, he should. And, and, as and you he know should. what? Good I laid eyes on him. Larry I laid Murphy. eyes on him on Saturday. He was steady. That D, like he will move around in that D core. They had put Ole Mata in. There was an injury, like, you know, which is fine. I think he's a third-pairing guy. And you know what? Third-pairing guys, if they're quiet, they can play in the league a long time and just do their job. Exactly. You're right. And it's a lot quieter for them. They're not – there's not everybody that's breaking stuff down for them. Detroit has a – had a nice start. I think they're a – they're an up-and-coming team. To bring it, everything he's throwing at the net is just going in, which is crazy. And he – you know what? Good for him. Um, but, yeah, like – 
this Atlantic division is pretty impressive. Like you'll see that, uh, you know, the Leafs have to keep pace. Yeah, because, absolutely. Uh, you know, all these teams and even Montreal picking up points here and there. Like it's uh, um, there's no freebies out no, there, there isn't. that way. There isn't. Yeah. Tampa and Florida are, you know, they're at the bottom of the barrel right now. Buffalo, like those are teams that expect to be playoff teams and compete for it uh, very early in the season. But it's likely going to be a tough race the rest of the way. Um, all right, Luke Wilson in studio at 5. Chris Johnston coming up later this hour. Some big news out of Edmonton over the weekend. We'll head out there, catch up with Ryan Rashog later this afternoon. Two ball games tonight, 30 years ago today. Magic in the air in Toronto. We'll tell you about that as well. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Luke Wilson in at 5 p.m., a.k.a. John Schneider, a.k.a. Michael Corleone. There's a lot of different <laughs> roles that Luke plays because the O Dog, also known as Fredo Corleone. I'm dumb, I'm smart, and I want respect. And uh, Ross Atkins, after throwing his boy under the bus for that Ravens Lions pick, Dude, we'll get I'm him to explain you, that at I'm 5 o'clock. I'm telling you, we. Owen Wilson is a team of retired professional athletes. If you think we would ever, ever let a guy that had a casino in his parents' basement <laughs> take us down or interrupt our way of life, you're dead wrong. You are dead wrong. Okay. We're together, and that's what happened. All right. We'll see. We'll get to that at five. Also, Patrick Beverly was going to podcast out, currently playing in the NBA. He's in Philly. They'll be in town on Saturday. He's calling out the Raptors uh, for what I think is an absolutely ridiculous uh, approach like the reason he's not sure the Raptors are going to be competitive this year we'll play it we'll get into it a little bit later this hour but uh, the Leafs are off today they're in DC they're playing Alex Ovechkin and the Capitals tomorrow at six o'clock on TSN4 Ovi still without a goal Washington just doesn't score goals period um, they don't look good man. they do not look like a very promising team they're screaming hey it's early Right? They want everyone to realize we're only a week and a half in. It's all good. Slow it down. Here's uh, Chris Johnston, our TSN Hockey Insider, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. How are you doing, CJ? I'm doing great, guys. How are you? We're doing very well. Um, yeah, we were talking about Joseph Wall and the goaltending situation to start the hour, CJ. It feels like every Leaf fan is. And at this, you know, the, the terminology that always gets used is goalie controversy, which I don't quite understand why it has to be a controversy necessarily but no but in our building we can't wait to say is there a goalie controversy i know but how about a, a goalie <laughs> competition is it ah, a controversy a or competition how, where do how you stand just on a that solid like manly pro athlete battle okay battle. go ahead cj where do you stand on it i think it's a competition mm -hmm. uh, more than a controversy i mean look at this time last year really samsonov was the leech backup goalie so you know he, he had a he had a good season he, he played most of the games in the playoffs at least until he got injured um, and so he he kind of exerted himself as the number one, and Joseph Wall hasn't has really just hasn't done it yet. But I don't think that this by any stretch was setting up for a year where you were counting on Samsonov necessarily to be starting, you know, like sixty games or something like that. I think that that there's lots of room for competition. Um, you know, the biggest issue or, or concern the Leafs had is just if if Wall, and you know, I'm sure they still do to some degree, if he took a step back this season because last year did go so well for him basically wherever he played net, mostly in the HL, but even even uh, some spot starts here in the NHL. And so, you know, they probably didn't want to throw too much on his plate, but, you know, I, I don't think there's much controversy when one guy isn't making saves. And, and you know, if, if Wall comes in as he did in, in the game in Tampa and gets a win and gets to start the next game, I mean, he's got a chance in my eyes to to roll with it and, and to, you know, take over the job if, if, he's, if he's up for it. Yeah, I think it sets up to be a really cool story. We've, we've discussed that a lot, that this hasn't really happened in Toronto since Felix Potvin, a, a young goalie drafted, developed, that walks in on a good team. And, you know, the, Sheldon Keefe is not in the business of storytelling. It doesn't matter, you know, who the goalie is, where he came from, what his background is. But I, I think the Leafs, it feels long overdue, CJ, that they finally produce a homegrown talent that they feel can produce in the net. Yeah, why not? And, you know, I, I look at Noodles. I'm sure we leave to most of the goalie talk on the show because he actually knows what's happening in there. I could tell you who's stopping pucks and, and whatnot. But I, I'll say when, when Wall came up in the playoffs last year, I did start to ask around uh, to some, some people I trust. And, and there was a lot of people that are high on this guy. You know, I think that at least the view from, from 
some that I spoke to, you know, didn't work for the team, so they weren't selling a narrative. You know, really think that that Wall has a chance to to be a, a number one starter in, in time in, in the league. And so I don't know if it's going to happen right now, but but you know, probably no better chance for the Leafs. I mean, remember, Samson, I've only signed a one year deal uh, in the off season. Uh, he went through you know salary arbitration with the team, and so it's not as though you know he, there's there's anything really blocking him to becoming. You know, it's someone who can be carrying the starts and, and be a Leafs goalie for, for the foreseeable future. So you know, I think that it's a great opportunity for him. And I don't think it's one that the, the Leafs management or anything have any problems with their coaching staff. I think that they always knew going into the season that, you know, Samsonov starts ahead, ahead in the race, but that it was going to be a race if, if uh, you know, if he didn't, uh, you know, if he basically opened the door the way he has with his play early on. I think it's, uh, and, and to finish on that point, CJ, it's, I think we all would agree. Like, there's nothing wrong with having a healthy goaltender competition here. The most that Ilya Samsonov's ever played in a season, I believe, is 42 games. So it's not like, you know, to uh, this isn't a 65 game. This isn't Markstrom who had an off season last year. This isn't Vasilevsky or Shesterkin or Demko, guys that who've proven that they can play 60-plus games. This was always going to be a tandem kind of open net, open situation you're just hoping for better play early on. Wall comes in in relief. Like, I, I thought he was okay against Chicago. We were all in the building, the three of us. I, I right. didn't think he was the reason they lost, but he wasn't the reason they, you know, right. got two Break points. Breakaway goals, but still. He was just yep. okay. Put mm-hmm. it that way. 27 for 30, 90% save percentage. He was just okay that night. Came in in re- relief the other night, and I thought he was fantastic at critical times. Big saves. Big saves big saves when they needed him point had the breakaway i think it was Jano was in clo- like alone there was a couple you know and then the kucherov save with a couple seconds left but i think it, it's it's important to understand that this net is open and if he's a good young goaltender which everyone has talked about it he's got an opportunity here to to grab this net and go yeah and let's not forget too they signed martin jones i think for a reason too it's probably a lot of what you're saying there noodles right it's it was Due to the possibility, and again, it's, it's so early in the season, this still could be possible that that one or both guys have injury issues or performance issues, and, and at least in Jones, you've got someone who started a lot of games. You know, who's right now with the team in the AHL, but you know, yeah. just the way that the position usually goes, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we're talking about him starting games for the Leafs at some point down the road. Yeah, this uh, this team, this franchise, has got a recent history of trying to protect young players. I would assume they'll do the same with Joseph Wall, although you know, Sheldon Keefe didn't really douse any fires the other night you know he, he basically alluded to a competition so let's get cook in here um i'm curious how you think their approach will be to matthew knives who is still a young player you know based on nhl experience incredibly young player yet scored two big goals the other night um you know they need some help in the bottom six so there might be a role or two up in the top six like what do you ex- what do you believe the maple leafs um, project his ceiling to look like, and and how much rope are they going to give him this year to have an impact on this season? Oh, I think he'll get a lot. I mean, there was even a, you know things moved around in the playoffs a fair bit last year, but he had some time with Austin Matthews in in playoff hockey, uh, basically straight out of the NCAA. And so, you know, I think that depending on you know how things go with the new guys, obviously the injury situation and things of that nature. I mean, I I, I don't I don't think that they're limiting him in, in any way. Obviously he started a little bit down the lineup and, you know, he's really on what the, the third line right now, but you know, if, if just the way Sheldon keep moves things around in his lineup, I, I think that if, if nice gets going here and, and, you know, it's making an impact that there's, there's going to be no restrictions on how high he plays or how many minutes he plays. I mean, we, we all know what the season's about uh, for the Leafs. And I think that Matthew nice is a really important player for them because if we talk about ways that they can maybe get better, uh, from from where they've been in the past, I mean, he's you know he's someone who wasn't on the team really until the the last week of last year's uh, regular season, and so you know anything they get from him in terms of a contribution, I think, is a positive. You know, that being said, of course, he's coming out of a college season, so you know he's never played anywhere near uh, something like the 82 game regular season that the NHL is going to throw at him. Plus, you know what the Leafs hope is a long playoff run beyond that. So you know, there's probably going to naturally be some ups and downs within that period for him, um, but. You know, I, I do think that they're they're extremely high on him. They, they, I mean, really, if you look back, it was a different management, uh, well, at least different manager and Kyle Dubas, but they, they had to, you know, carve out a certain amount of cap space at the trade deadline in order to leave room to sign him. And obviously they did that and put him right in the lineup in the playoffs. I mean, that, that's a pretty good 
a statement right there about but how how they feel about you know what his ceiling could be and and obviously even his present and you know, he had a big impact uh, in the third period there on Saturday. CJ, I haven't read anything about Fraser Minton. Is he? I think it's kind of a known that he would be going back to junior. Or does he get back into a game? Has that already happened? Is he sticking with the team for the rest of this road trip? I, I don't know the precise plans, but I'm with you. I think that the the eventual um, destination for him is, is almost certainly going to be back to the Western Hockey League. Um, you know, I saw Mark Masters tweet out he was at practice in Washington today that that Minton's going to be scratched tomorrow. Sheldon Keith confirmed that to the reporters there today. So, you know, that's two games in a row. And and you know, but I, I don't know that the Leafs have to make that move on the road trip. Um, you know, maybe, maybe they, they give him this time. There's probably some value for him even in, in, you know, being on this kind of trip, still getting to practice and skate with NHL players every day and doing extra conditioning work uh, with their staff. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that in the early going of the season, you just, it's not as if he was horrible or anything, but you didn't see a separating ability. I don't, I don't think that there was, um, you know, anything in his game that sort of screamed that he had to, to stay here. And and that being said, I don't, I really don't think it's that, big a deal if, if he does go back. I think it, he's probably going to go back with a whole boost of confidence, a little bit more money in his bank account, and I suspect we'll be watching him at the World Junior Tournament when, you know, representing Team Canada. With Chris Johnston, our TSN Hockey Insider, um, CJ, I'm sure you're aware that we play a game called Role Play Level of Concern on this show. I, I want you to play the role of Jay Woodcroft, the head coach of the Edmonton Oilers, who are 1-3-1 one, and, one, and Connor McDavid is out for at least a week or two. What is your level of concern? At this point, your team is kind of in a tough spot. And you have to pick one of the options that we do. (laughs) (laughs) What are the options? Well, pine on the patio, no concern. A six-pack with a shot or two, mediocre concern. Wade Boggs, 24 cold ones under your seat at a hockey game. Yes. kind of... It's a lot of concern. A lot of concern. And then nuclear levels of concern... Is uh, Nick Cage in leaving Las Vegas? How about a six pack and a shot? Okay, that's reasonable. I, 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 I'm not saying I'm not saying it's nothing, nothing, but you know it, it's still pretty early, and yeah. you know. But he's already kind of called them out, right? They had a game last week, and he had some. I don't know if you want to take called out, but he's had some harsh sort of criticisms publicly. They lost eight one on opening night, and now they're without McDavid. I mean, that's that's not zero levels of concern because. It's it's one thing to be slow over the first ten days of the season, but now they might have to play the next ten without the best player in the world, and and it could look pretty different by the time he's back if they don't turn things around quickly. Yeah, well, and also he's not going on long term IR, so they have no cap space, right? So it sounds like they're down to the minimum: eighteen skaters, a couple of goalies. If you have another injury, if some guy leaves and can't go or whatever, um, there's going to be a cap dance here. And I think what sucks for the league is the Heritage Classic is next week. It's the outdoor game, yeah, it's, so, uh, and he's not playing in it. You know, it's that. Well, they didn't sucks, roll him out. They're, 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 they're trying to keep the, the flashlight on there. They did say there's a chance he plays. Of course game. they are, because everyone's like, please pretend like he's playing. You know, you so can't pretend. Sell some tickets. It, yeah, well, exactly. Like you, you, if you, a, you, if you haven't sold out yet, you're trying to sell out. B, you're trying to build up this production naturally. It's it's smart for them not to rule him out. Hopefully, he does play. But you mentioned it's early in the year. You want him playing in a situation like that if he's not at 100%? No chance. You're not putting him outdoors with the cold and the wind under the lights or whatever it is. I don't know, man. Um, that sucks. Like, if he doesn't play in that, that's a big production. That's the original outdoor game. Oh, yeah, and he's, he's not going to be a part of it, likely. And, you know, Hellebuck stood on his head on Saturday night. He was outstanding. Like Edmonton was up two nothing, like six minutes into the game, and flying shots were like ten one, and yeah, yeah. Hellebuck shut the door. Winnipeg chipped back, and Edmonton's one three and one. Not a good start. Yeah, Winnipeg needed that too. They needed it was nice that. to see. And and you know what? Like before we get ahead of ourselves, a shout out to Rick Bonus yes. and you the know the Bonus uh, family for Bonus sure. Bonus family yeah. for sure. Thinking of them, but um, you know Winnipeg. That was a good game actually. Like I thought it was going to be ugly. Like I don't know if you guys were watching that. That was it was too cob before you even like yeah. kind of sat down and settled in. But Winnipeg just chipped and chipped away, and then that's a bad goal. You, I always talk about timely goals, right? You can't give up that goal at two, uh, the shorthanded goal at 2 1 near the end of the second period. You're on the power play. If you go back on that 
Evander Kane enters the zone and takes a snapshot from the boards. Like, and, and it goes all the way around, and then Stuart Skinner comes out, and I don't know what he was doing yeah, on that play. Yeah, me neither. I don't like, know. Like, that's a bad doing. goal. Like, yeah, that's, a, that's a deflating goal at the wrong time. And that's what, after that, they never really got it back. Like, they, they had some chances. Again, Hellebuck was brilliant when yes, he needed to be. He was brilliant. really good. And you mentioned Evander Kane. All eyes are on him, aren't they, CJ? Like, it's everywhere else he's been, after a while, people wonder, you know, how's it working? And he's he's been relegated to the third line. He did a intermission interview basically saying, eh, I'm not playing. Might as well get in a fight. Uh, like, it's got to be a little bit uneasy around that team and, and specifically Evander Kane. Yeah. And look, it's, it's been really good for Kane and Edmonton. You know, there, there hasn't been a lot of things that have come up uh, in the past at some of his other stops with other teams. Obviously they, they brought him in initially for part short season and ended up giving him an extension. I think that, um, you know, he's been a positive member of the organization. So yeah, this is a, uh, this will be a good opportunity I think, for the coaching staff to challenge him too, because I would expect there's more minutes available with 97, not to, in the lineup and, and, you know, with, with him sort of voicing some displeasure and, and them needing, you know, everyone to step up in the absence of McDavid. Um, you know, he's he's a player that I think we'll be, we'll be watching closely to see how he responds to all yeah, that. For sure. All right, CJ, we'll leave it there, buddy. Thank you for doing this. We'll do it again soon. All right, guys. Have a great day. There is uh, Chris Johnston, our TSN hockey insider, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Build your next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota and check out Maple Toyota's pre-owned inventory arriving daily. It's time to Toyota. Visit mapletoyota.com. We talked so much about Connor Bedard, and then after he rolled through town, it faded. We should point out, even though they lost, he scored in Chicago as home opener. That was really cool, and yeah, that's what you would expect. Guys like that, it always seems to happen that way, doesn't it? Like their first yeah. game at home, he comes right down Broadway, picks a corner, place He's goes like, nuts. I got to show these fans that I am the real deal, that yep. they did draft the right guy, and I will turn the ship around. It's happy for him. It was yeah. a really cool scene. Yeah, and Chicago... What are they two man, and they four got, now? Like, yeah, they got they got work to do, man. They, like, they got a, yeah. Everyone knows that. Yeah, you're right. Like they're 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 in the hey they got they bottomed out they got the golden goose now they got to start building around him. That's mm -hmm. it's yes. going to take time. I will say, this Colorado team, man, they're they unreal. Look, they're yeah, serious. they're 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 a juggernaut. Them and Vegas are serious. Them like, and Vegas yes, are serious. They are, they are very serious. very serious. <laughs> it's, yes, it's, er are. it's still early, but like I say, like the, you're looking at teams that look buttoned up. There's a couple of them. Like you know, Boston yeah. looks buttoned up. Uh, Vegas is buttoned up, and, and Colorado and some of these well, other top tier teams have to button it up a little bit. Like yeah, like if I'm know, a coach, I'm like, how do the Vegas Golden Knights? drink 7 million beers each after winning the cup, and they come out dialed in and ready to go and ready to work, and as you just described, Noodles, buttoned up. And then we've got 15 coaches who some of the teams didn't even make the playoffs. If they didn't, they didn't go very far, and they're wondering what the hell's up with their hockey team. So, that's, I don't know. Uh, well, that's they, culture, they, man. Yeah, they must, they must be mystified. They must be mystified. We'll get into it later, but if you take a look, like we talked about the Atlantic, look at the Pacific. It's awful at the bottom. It, it, but that's that's what it was last year. Do you remember how how the Pacific and the West was so far behind the East, and then by the end of the year, everyone had kind of caught up. But mm -hmm. that that Pacific, like Edmonton's lucky that Calgary had a tough road trip. Uh, Seattle stubbed their toe out of the gate. Like Big LA time. is only five hundred. Like you look at some of these teams outside of Vegas and Colorado. Everyone else is kind of just middle of the pack. Yeah, no, that's the truth. And and you know it's early, but you look at goal differential. Vegas is six and zero plus fourteen goal differential. Colorado five and zero plus oh. thirteen. You know, yeah, it's goal differential guy. Goal, oh. Big time goal differential guy. No, I, I didn't know. I didn't oh, know. Yeah. I did big not know. Big time goal differential guy. Yeah. It means they're not just winning, though. They're spanking teams. Yeah. You know, like it, oh. it's really the, that's what's happening. They're not. They're they're scoring goals. They're not giving up anything. Vegas is three and zero at home. Three and zero on the road. Like as impressive as Vegas is, considering the cup hangover and the and you would think with that division too, you're like you can take it easy and just ease your way back into it, you're still going to make the playoffs. I think you can make a case Boston starts even more impressive because they did what they did during the regular season last year. They lose Bergeron. They lose Krejci. They've started on the road. They're at West, albeit yeah. playing terrible teams in Anaheim and San oh, Jose. Their Awful schedule teams. is the biggest puff cake of all time. Still, 5-0. Oh. They I beat Chicago. It. The Leafs didn't. 
You I know? get it. I get it. Yeah, no, they're just the Boston all. Bruins, man. Like Noodle but that's said, it. buttoned up. They're buttoned up. And that's ready what to they rock. do. They're called. I saw Jim Montgomery the other day. Was pissed at a morning skate. You know, <laughs> our buddy Jimmy. Yes, he's, <laughs> he's uh, the best. <laughs> take the brusque. Didn't play because he was late for a team meeting or whatever it was. Yeah, he's not messing around. He's not which messing is good. around. I, I always wonder about that culture, guys. Man. Like, if he was five minutes late, and I have seen a couple little blurbs that it's not his first time. But if he's five minutes late, can he buy the boys lunch? Like it might cost him five grand. Wow. Buy everybody some sandwiches and stuff. Know, You're man. right, but let's let's let, let just. Oh, what again. are you, Mr. Bear Bryant? There? I am. I'm Bill Bell. I go to the school of Bill Belichick. Bill okay. Belichick would have cut him. Uh, yeah, he would have cut him probably. Said you're, you're out. a get joke. The, we'll get into it when we get right back. I got a comment. <laughs> right That's the truth. You're a joke. Go, go talk to, to Johnny Ola. And you're a joke. Go talk to and Johnny Ola. And you're a joke. Go talk to Johnny Ola. Oh, and you're a joke. All right, Luke Wilson in Studio 15. <laughs> Overdrive continues. TSN 10:50 and on TSN 4. All right, Luke Wilson coming up. TSN 1050's Leafs lineup is your chance to win Leaf tickets every week, all season long. Every weekday, we'll announce a current or former Maple Leaf player. And on Fridays, you'll have a chance to call in and name the Maple Leaf lineup of the week. Name all the players in the lineup. You're going to see a future game. Today's player is Larry Murphy, the original Justin Hall. Larry right. Murphy. Larry Murphy. <clears throat> hall of Famer Larry Murphy. This week, we're giving away a pair of tickets to see the Leafs take on the Sabres November 4th. I think that's a Saturday game, too. That'll be big. There you go. I think there's been five defensemen since Larry Murphy that just, they pick one. It's like they gather at some farm field, and yeah. they all whisper <laughs> it, and they pass it down the line like my kids used to do at lunch. Mm -hmm. There's our and guy. It, that's yeah. our target. That is our guy. Pass it on. Yep. The new Larry Murphy, Justin Hall, and he's in Detroit, right? Win him games, and he's like a plus eight. He's leading the league in plus minus. Oh, he'll be plus 65 this year. Loving will. life. Yeah, up Loving for the Norris. life. Up for the Norris. All <laughs> right. Luke Wilson coming up. Patrick Beverly on the Raptors. You're going to want to hear that, too. We'll get into it. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4.